Hi, I'm Barbara Hoppe. I'm the sixth ward council person for Columbia, and next to me is Carl Scala from the third ward. Uh, I was one of the founding members of Boone County Smart Growth around 2000, and uh, we had a variety of educational programs, and one of them was uh, an interest in finding out what our natural resources are in Columbia, because there were a whole lot of uh, concerns about development, development and preserving the character and the resources of Columbia, and to really have good planned development. Uh, so when I was elected to the City Council in 2003, or no, 2006, uh, one of the things I did, one of the first things I did was at the uh, Council Retreat, uh, pushed for and advocated for Columbia having a natural, doing a natural resources inventory of what is here in Columbia so we can make some good planning and decisions on where to grow, where to build, what to preserve, and to really be a 21st century uh, com thoughtful community. So we want to share with you um, what has been done in terms of Columbia being a leader in the nation in developing a natural resources inventory through um, a really a GIS system. And there was um, an, er an aerial uh, flyover, what was that, two years ago now? or? Three years yeah, it's ago. A, it's about two and a half years, I think, altogether. Um, but let me just yeah, introduce sure. myself as Go well. Ahead. I, I'm, I'm Carl Scala. I'm the third ward city councilman. Um, I was kind of a latecomer to this. Uh, uh, I, I wound up on the council about a year after uh, Barbara did. Um, she had started uh, some of this uh, interest in the natural resources inventory. Uh, some of us uh, saw right away the value in this, uh, particularly from the perspective of uh, establishing a baseline to find out uh, where we were, what exactly exists in terms of the, the amount of uh, developable land and the amount of uh, forested land and so on and so forth. Um, all of this technology kind of uh, came together uh, with the, with the uh, advent of, of higher resolution cameras and so that we, uh, we really uh, wound up getting a flyover and that was about two and a half years ago right. or so. so. And it was a sort of a six pixel Six inch per pixel, right. so we got a much better resolution than, than was available at the time before that. So we have this uh, data, aerial database. Uh, so we want to just go through some slides and, and share some things with you and talk about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's start out with the natural resources inventory. Uh, the, the inventory really was conceived uh, to create a comprehensive uh, database of existing terrain and uh, vegetation and development. Um, it would include the tree canopies, uh, land cover, watersheds, streams, slopes, and, uh, and tree species, uh, all in the GIS format, which would uh, uh, lend itself to being able to, to, uh, to uh, use this uh, information as overlays so that we could use it for other purposes. And the study area uh, was not just Columbia, but the Columbia metro area. Uh, the city of Columbia is 61 square miles, and then the Columbia metro area is about 180 square miles. And then added to that was about 18 square miles in the southwest area of the metro area that, they, that the city anticipated would be developing soon. This, uh, this eventually was, th this was in conjunction with the university. Uh, 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 Professor Haithcote uh, led the, the charge on this in conjunction with the city um, to create uh, some of the, the, the overlays that came out of the original filming uh, with the flyover. Um, they, they had a multispectral band uh, uh, flyover. That is, they used infrared and various blue and red and green color combinations, uh, which lent itself when all combined um, to, uh, to, uh, 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 to approximate the true color of what was really on the ground. And I wanted to add um, another, another person from the university that was um, the research specialist that actually spent like eight hours a day for four months uh, working on this was, we, I think it's Weibo Song, and the person in the city 
Uh, it was John Fleck, who's our uh, GIS coordinator, and he has spent a lot of time on that. This, so I wanted to give them credit for it. Uh, now this is a, um, a picture of Albert Oakland Park from the aerial photograph. Uh, and you can zoom in and see uh, the trees and the, the pervious surface uh, closer, much closer and clearer, which we don't have a zoom in what, shot one at of the, the time. Just, just not to interrupt, yeah. but, but one, of the, one of the issues here was that we wanted to, the, 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 the increased resolution for the six inch per pixel meant that we could really identify some of the things that were on the ground. Uh, one of those things that we could identify on the ground uh, were some of the forest classes. And so we could actually, with this resolution, determine not only that there were trees, but what type of trees they were. And that's important for our ordinances because a lot of it depends on oak hickory forests, and we have to identify those in order to find out where those trees are. Right. And uh, we, there was a ground crew also, uh, well, actually 1,250 people, who went over 15 uh, square miles and identified trees and then brought, brought back that information so that the GIS people could then apply that data right. and then determine what other trees in the uh, flyover without the ground verification were elm or oak or hickory, which is the native tree species of Columbia right. area. Some some of the slides we've identified here, we can identify the tree cover, we can identify some of the, the grass uh, class uh, next to the tree cover, we can identify impervious surfaces which are important for stormwater regulations, and we can identify the slopes. Uh, and this slide that we're using here really identifies the slopes in terms of, of, of how steep the slopes are next to some of the uh, streams that we have. In this particular slide, the darker images really represent steeper slopes, and the lighter Im images represent uh, less steep slopes. Oh, if I could, can I sure, you can go, go back. to back sure. here? I wanted to say something about the impervious surface. Uh, Columbia had a task, stormwater task force that spent about five years coming up with a sort of compromised stormwater ordinance and manual, and so uh, this flyover can be used for us to know exactly where we have impervious surface and how much and then when we make development decisions we can take into consideration what's what impervious surface is there right now that hasn't uh, been uh, adjusted or controlled for stormwater quality and quantity and what this means to the public is uh, protection so your house isn't flooded down right. the stream right. And, and might I add, with that impervious surface business, it also identifies not only the roads and the streets and the cement that's poured, but also the rooftops and so on. All of that is impervious surface, and all of that contributes to stormwater runoff. Right. And we're if we're looking down the road for green roofs, we can see where we might have those, or solar panels, right. some potential right. uses down the line. Right. In uh, this one, the orange Oops. Go ahead. is... Uh, the orange is the grass, and I'm just lets us know where there's not impervious surface. Yeah, it's just, just, it yeah. just resolves the issue about the difference between the trees right. and, the, and the plain areas in, in, in between. This, what you mentioned before had to do with the ground truthing. This slide kind of represents a, a number of people who actually had to go out and, and, and resolve where some of these actual species of trees and the kinds of forests that we're talking about actually exist. I mean, they have to go out uh, in their cars uh, to visit these okay. sites to make sure that when we finally get the flyover information and, the, and the, uh, the, the camera information from that flyover, that these sites uh, really represent what it is that we're actually looking at. So, right. And they looked at vegetation right. also. Right. And then they applied the data to the the rest of the uh, flyover area that we didn't have ground people on and I think uh, they said that there was a 80 percent accuracy that when they took That's these character characteristics they could pretty much then quantify things where they didn't have ground crews so so between the ground truthing and between the fly uh, between that and the flyover uh, with this kind of resolution we really have the capability 
of identifying or distinguishing between different kinds of hardwood trees. We can actually distinguish between some of the maple trees and some of the sycamore trees and some of the oak trees and so on, which is important uh, in the city because a lot of our ordinances, uh, tree ordinances, are based on oak hickory forests. And we have to determine where the oak hickory forests are. This is a way to do that. Right. And if I could just say, um, there's lots of applications to this. One is um, tree preservation. One's in uh, creating an action plan uh, for the mayor's climate protection agreement, which we, you want to preserve climax forests and have tree cover. Uh, but there's also other aspects to this that can be used by every city department and will streamline and uh, their functions and make it more efficient. For example, uh, in, on power lines, the city will be able to look at what type of tree is by a power line, and if it's silver maple, maple and those limbs mm. break easily with ice, uh, they can start doing some planning for uh, trimming those trees. So it has a variety of applications. Right. And some of those applications, frankly, uh, they're, they're, there's, there's natural resource assessment, there's vegetation and tree canopy mapping, planning for roadways, which is very important, green space and trails, energy conservation, which you've alluded to, stormwater management, which, which we've mentioned, tree preservation and land preservation. It also gives us an opportunity to determine what some of the developable areas are and some of the areas that may, we may want to preserve uh, in its natural state. Right. And the beauty of this is it's not only we, we, can, we have a database to rationally look at where we should preserve land, but also where we should develop and uh, what type of development. So uh, de the developers, the citizens of Columbia, as well as the city staff, as well as council people will all have access to this information. So it should help uh, growth, us determine um, what policies we, we need to do in terms of growth management planning. It will help developers see uh, what the land features are and whether the type of development they want to put on a land is appropriate for the land. And it will streamline the process. So it's good for the economy, it's good for the development, it's good for the environment. Uh, this, this last slide is just a, it's a, a slide that demonstrates the loss of forest in our community. Um, the, 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 the green uh, shades in this slide really represent uh, the losses of forest. Uh, the brown represents some of the uh, impervious surfaces uh, because of buildings and so on. But it does demonstrate the extent to which we have lost already some of the natural resources. Uh, I think this NRI certainly will provide us an opportunity to see what that baseline is right now and then figure out where we need to go from here. I'm glad you brought up this issue of growth management planning. It's one of my, uh, that, that's, that's how I got involved in the interest uh, with this uh, NRI. I mean, I appreciate the work that you've done uh, trying to get this NRI established because the National Resources Inventory really provides a road map uh, to establish growth management planning, which I think is something that the entire council has been on board with, uh, and, and that's the direction that we need to go. Um, I, just for the sake of the, the audience out there, growth management planning, as opposed to uh, uh, growth control, um, is really, uh, it, it has just several tenets, um, not the least of which is just to coordinate public and private activity. And, and really, it's, at its most basic level, it's a way to avoid duplication of infrastructure. It's a, it's, a, it's a savings approach and a wise approach to planning that I think we desperately need in, in the city. And it's certainly been supported by the city council, and I, and I think that's the direction that we're headed. I think it's a good direction. And uh, the converse uh, of uh, growth management planning is no planning. Nope. <laughs> and uh, that's not good for the pocketbook of the city. You know, if you have sprawl, you have to have roads and, and infrastructure to service that. And that all costs money. Uh, and so this is a way for the city to uh, determine where we should develop, to try to do more infill, uh, to uh, create a really a livable 21st century community. No question. I think part of the one of the issues that we've had for a long time 
is that at least up to this point, a lot of our planning has been driven by sales taxes. We have, we have, uh, we have, we, we are kind of addicted to sales taxes in this in this community, and and a lot of commercial development has has become established because the city council wanted to make sure um, that we had a way to pay our bills, and sales taxes was a way to do that. I, I think I suspect that that's exactly the opposite of what we need to do. We need to plan first, and then uh, take a look at the taxes. But this NRI concept, and that's really what, what we're into here, provides the base uh, for which we can make those evaluations, what we need to salvage and what we need to uh, uh, consider uh, for, for preservation, and what we need to, frankly, what we need to consider for uh, the shovel-ready sites, for right, example. That's right. a, it's, it's an economic development tool as, along with everything else. And then I think in the past, without this natural resources inventory and without growth management planning, uh, everything was a battle uh, because we didn't have any policies and tools in place. Uh, and this will sort of streamline things so we know what is the more natural watershed, steep slope areas, the climax for forest where you want to uh, maybe not direct growth or have limited growth or preservation, and what are the areas that are really appropriate for development uh, and the different types of development, commercial, industrial, office, uh, and make that an easier process. So we're, we're creating, looking at the whole picture and having policies and procedures in place uh, to, to have a good functioning, developing community. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't bring up the, the Boone County Smart Growth Coalition again, uh, who had kind of sponsored this, this forum here. Um, we, we're doing this on, on their behalf. Uh, I do want to acknowledge them um, that this really fits into the whole smart growth concept. I mean, these things are not mutually exclusive. The NRI, growth management planning, and the, and the principles uh, of, of smart growth all fit hand in hand. And, the, and these are kind of win-win situations, not just for environmentalists, but also for the business community and the, and the chamber and all of these other folks in order to provide a means to plan more effectively and, and, and frankly, to maximize uh, your profits without duplicating unnecessary infrastructure. That's expensive not only for businesses, but it's expensive for the taxpayer. And we, we frankly can no longer afford to do that anymore. And I, w I wanted to talk a little bit about how this information is overlapped with other information. The city has um, information about, about soil. Uh, we have uh, sewer lines, we have roads, we have uh, information about pl flood, flood plains, uh, our utility lines, and these can all be layered so we know how they all interact and that will help to make better decisions not only for the council but for uh, the city staff. And then the other thing that's uh, really uh, interesting and, and productive is that for our planning department, they'll be able to look at this database and uh, make better recommendations and comments and decisions when they have applications for development. Um, and tell, be able to tell developers early on uh, what problems they may encounter in trying to develop this piece of land versus some other piece of, uh, piece of land. Uh, and we should save t um, time for our staff and we should save money no. for <coughs> our staff too. So it has a, a lot of um, implications and benefits that we really didn't anticipate. And there. I do want to give uh, uh, the city staff and, and uh, our city manager, Bill Watkins, uh, credit for coming up. I proposed the natural, having a natural resources inventory, but it was the city staff who came up with the idea of doing this uh, flyover and having this GIS system. The technical folks really yeah. got into it. And <laughs> what I, one thing I don't want to miss saying is that Columbia is a leader in this um, area. Absolutely. In fact, we may be the first city to do something of this sort. We've been featured um, within the state of Missouri and we anticipate that uh, the National League of Cities has a showcase for cities doing um, innovative and uh, leading 
uh, things in their community, whether it's uh, fighting graffiti or whatever. And we think Columbia is going to be featured, we hope, um, in the Natu National League of Cities for the work and effort that the city has done on this. That's, on that's very important. We've, we've gone to several meetings. Barbara and I have gone to several meetings with the National League of Cities. I'm affiliated with that group as, uh, uh, in, in other ways as well. But they always showcase some of these the cities uh, for some of their innovative uh, uh, awards. I think this one really, really is one of the candidates for an innovative award. And I intend, I'm sure you do as well, that, to push this as far as we can um, to see if we cannot compete with, uh, with other cities in the United States. And as far as I can tell, there aren't very many that have this kind of uh, jump on, on this, this innovative way of, of, of future planning. That's something that's very important uh, f uh, for, for our city and I think um, could very well uh, mean a, uh, an award. Right. If we and the other thing I liked about this project <clears throat> and something that has been our focus in council for the last, mine for the last three years, but even more so in the last uh, two years, is partnering with the university and with the county and uh, with uh, even environmental groups, uh, nonprofit groups. Uh, so this is a collaborative effort uh, with the university, the uh, city, uh, and different environmental groups actually went uh, on the on the ground to verify things. Uh, so in and, and, and this can be used by the county and should be used by the county because we have to coordinate our efforts in terms of development. Yeah, and I want to I want to I want to put this message out to my economic development friends out there. This is not just an environmental issue. I mean, this has the potential. These overlays not only are they there are environmental overlays. But this also has the potential for even social overlays and, and, and all kinds of other kinds of, 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 of issues that may be mapped according to this flyover in terms of location. So this is a template for lots of uh, different kinds of uh, useful uh, ideas that we may be able to, right. to use for the city. And just um, another thing I remember um hearing about was the uh, Water and Light Department has a tree program for uh, conserving energy and creating shade on houses and they'll, they're will they planning on using this to see where the shade is and how successful their tree program is and, and how many people are using it and then where they should expand it. So there's the Parks Department will be able to use it in terms of looking at what land they have or potential land that maybe people want to give them or they'll acquire and what <coughs> are the appropriate uses where there should be recreational uh, uh, programs and facilities and where it should just be kept natural. Be before, we, before we leave I'd like to just make available that, that if there are any questions out there if people want more information uh, they can either contact Barbara at, uh, at Ward 6 at GoColumbiaMo.com or, or me at Ward 3 uh, at, at GoColumbiaMo.com and we'd be happy to share any of the information or any of some, some of this, the slides that we have uh, or answer any questions that anyone might have. I would be and pleased to do that. We also, the Boone County Smart Growth Coalition meets the first Wednesday of each month and a the first Wednesday of April we will be featuring the natural resources inventory and talking more about it, showing more slides and giving people an opportunity uh, to ask questions and uh, so uh, come on out it's at the Boone County uh, Smart Gro or Boone County Government, the Government Center, Center 7 o'clock 7 p.m. The Commission Chambers yeah the right uh, the first Wednesday of every month and that will be April